Let's learn in this live work session how to enforce HTTPS traffic in a Kubernetes cluster. We'll see how this works for the ingress resource and then how this works for interpod communication. Let's get started. Because you are watching this video, then chances are high that you are looking for more content and more videos about Kubernetes, AKS, Terraform, and Azure. So I'll invite you to check out my YouTube videos to get more content. Let's learn in this video about TLS certificates in a Kubernetes cluster. When we have a user that wants to connect to our services exposed into the cluster, that user actually wants to if he wants to connect to our services, he will actually connect through his browser or through his application and he will connect first to the ingress resource that we have defined in the cluster. So that's going to be the point of entry for those users in order to connect to the cluster. So this user actually wants to connect to my services through HTTPS. Okay, that's what is recommended in the real world applications. So here we would enforce using HTTPS for the ingress that we expose. Behind the ingress, we would have some services that we are exposing. Those services will be exposed inside the pods. So from here, we would have one or multiple uh, pods for our applications. So let's say here, I would have the pod for the front-end application. And as we said, that might be multiple replica of the pod. This pod itself, or this group of pods, can connect and communicate with some other pods inside the cluster. So I might have here, I might have the front end and this one, the back end for the application. So again, I would have a second set of uh, pods defined in here. Here we have started the traffic using HTTPS enter the, ing the ingress. But for requirements for some uh, companies and some organizations, they require even the traffic between the pods inside the cluster that should be using HTTPS. So this means that here we should be using HTTPS. That's a security requirement to make sure that uh, the requests and all the traffic will be end-to-end -end encrypted. And even if the traffic between the ingress and uh, the pod, this one also should be encrypted using HTTPS. Now, how can we encrypt this traffic using uh, HTTPS? So there are here two levels for, um, for this uh, encryption. So first level here we have for the ingress. Now, how can we enforce this HTTPS uh, traffic? So actually the technique or the concept will be the same for the ingress resource and for the pods. All of these resources will need to use a TLS certificate to enforce the HTTPS traffic. The TLS certificate could be either embedded into the pod, and as I always say, that's not a good practice because the pod could be compromised, and in that case, that a TLS certificate could be exposed and it could be also compromised. So better solution here is to expose that TLS certificate through a Kubernetes secret. So for each one of these resources, we would have a Kubernetes a secret and that Kubernetes secret will go to expose the TLS certificate for the resource. In this case, it's going to be for the ingress, for example. That secret then will be consumed by the ingress controller. So this one will go to use that uh, Kubernetes secret, it will go to uh, mount it as a volume and then it will be mounted in the environment variables and then that ingress could consume that secret. And the same will apply for the pods of the application. So for each uh, group of pods or for each deployment, we would create a TLS certificate there and expose that TLS certificate as a Kubernetes secret. So we would have then another secret in here and that secret will expose a TLS certificate for the pods. And that secret would be, could be consumed actually by all the pods uh, inside the deployment. Now the question is who will provide those secrets or those TLS certificates? Here we have two options. One option for uh, multiple options actually for the ingress and some other options for the pods. Let's start first with the ingress. So this TLS certificate for the ingress, its property is that the certificate will leave for a little bit longer than the pods. For the ingress, maybe the certificate will live for something like three months, for, exa for example. While this one for the pod, the certificate will live for just maybe in some cases that's gonna be 30 seconds, for example, or 30 minutes. So we'll go to renew it very, very often. 
Those are just uh, example values, okay? So this uh, secret for the ingress will be created and generated outside the cluster. So we might have some other external uh, third party tools that will go to create this TLS certificate and expose it. So maybe we are using DigiCert or Let's Encrypt or Global Sign in order to create that TLS certificate and then uh, provide that TLS certificate into a key value management uh, store solution, like for example, uh, Azure Key Vault and so on. And then here how we can uh, provide that TLS here. So I would have another operator that could be, of course, the uh, cluster operator who will go just uh, create a new secret and save the TLS certificate inside that uh, uh, secret. So that's done manually. We don't like manual stuff, so we can automate that by using another solution that could be the secret store CSI driver. This driver actually could connect to external KMS solutions like Azure Key Vault or also another solution like AshiCorp Vault, which is very known in Kubernetes. So this means that um, the certificate will be saved inside the Key Vault and then the secret source CSI driver will go to get that certificate from Key Vault and then it will go to mount it as a secret into the Kubernetes cluster and expose it to the ingress. Then next, the ingress will go just to consume that TLS uh, certificate. So the idea here is that the TLS certificate for the ingress is very uh, important, is very, it should be uh, secured. So we save it outside, we provide it outside the cluster and then uh, we using the secret store CSI driver, we can retrieve it and expose it to the ingress. Now moving to the pod, so inside my cluster, actually, I can use short-lived TLS certificates. This means I will get more open certificates, so I can use a solution that could be embedded inside the cluster itself. So to provide that TLS certificate, actually, I still can use the uh, cluster uh, or the cluster operator, but that's lots of manual work to create uh, that TLS certificate each 30 minutes. So what should be using here is the cert manager. The cert manager, that's a component that could be installed inside the cluster. It will go to provision or use some other third party tools to get a TLS certificate from there, from let's encrypt, for example, or use a self-signed uh, certificate and then expose it as a secret to our pods. So we should configure this for each deployment in our cluster. We still have a second solution that is using the service mesh. Almost all service meshes supports the TLS uh, certificates because they will create a new mesh. They will provide this um, sidecar proxy that will manage the communication between uh, the pods. So that communication will go through that uh, proxy sidecar, which will already provide that TLS certificate. And the case with the service mesh is that this solution is actually very, very uh, easy to implement when compared with using other uh, solutions because that sidecar uh, proxy actually, it have the TLS um, feature built in, okay? So we just install the service mesh and we add our pods to the mesh and then by default, you would have that communication enabled uh, using HTTPS. So for, for these uh, service meshes, maybe the easiest one to configure for uh, uh, MTLS or for TLS is Linkerd. Second one, maybe that could be Istio. And then we have some other options using OSM, Open uh, Service Mesh, the one provided by Microsoft. And we have, uh, of course, lots of other service meshes available on the market.